So what is the big deal about this solar eclipse thing, and why is it so important? Let's explain it. Hey everyone, welcome to Things Explained. Today I'm going to be explaining solar eclipses. You've probably heard a lot about these recently. That's because the next one will occur on August 21st. An eclipse is when one object of the sky obscures the light from another object. When we talk about solar eclipses, we usually refer to when the moon blocks out the sun from the earth. The sun is about 400 times larger than the moon, but it's also about 400 times as far away from us as the moon. Since these two ratios are so close to each other, the sun and the moon appear almost the same size in the sky. So how often does a solar eclipse happen? Well, it depends. Technically, there is always a solar eclipse occurring somewhere in the solar system, but we obviously don't care about it unless it is visible from the Earth. The solar eclipse is only visible when the viewer is directly in the moon's shadow. This is dependent on two things, the phase of the moon and the angle between the moon and the sun in the sky. The phase of the moon is determined by how much of the moon is illuminated by the sun. A full moon is when the entire moon appears lit up, while a new moon is when we can't see any of the lit portion. During a new moon, which occurs around every 28 days, the moon is at its closest point in the cycle to being between the sun and the earth, since all of the moon's light is bouncing away from the earth. This is one of the criteria of what must happen in order for a solar eclipse to be viewable from earth. So if that's the case, why does an eclipse happen every month? Well, the path of the sun and the moon through the sky aren't exactly the same. There's a difference of a few degrees which makes it so they just barely miss each other most of the time. In order for a total solar eclipse to be viewable, the two paths have to intersect at the perfect moment. The measurements are so precise that the eclipse is only viewable for a short time. There are three different kinds of solar eclipses. A partial eclipse is when the paths come close enough that the moon partially blocks the sun, but they don't line up perfectly. These are much more common. However, due to the intensity of the sun, it's really hard to notice without proper equipment, unless over 90% of the sun is blocked out. Please don't try to look directly at the sun to try and prove me wrong here. Even when it becomes noticeable, the sun is still really bright and you'll need special filters to be able to look at it. The other two kinds of solar eclipses are when the paths of the sun and the moon line up. As I mentioned before, the sun and the moon appear roughly the same size from Earth. Even though the actual sizes of the two doesn't really change much, their distances from the Earth do. This variation is just enough so that sometimes the sun is bigger, and other times the moon is. If the moon is bigger, there is a potential for a total eclipse, meaning that the moon completely blocks out the sun. If the sun is bigger, the moon cannot fully block out the sun, producing an annular eclipse. Now that's a funny word, so let's break it down. The term annular comes from Latin. In Spanish, the closest word is anil, which means ring. The moon appears to cut out the center of the sun like a donut, so we are left with a ring of light. However, remember that the sun is still very bright, so you should use proper filtering equipment anytime you want to look at it. So how often do we get to witness these events? Low quality events happen every few years or so. Five years ago, there was an annular eclipse over the Pacific Ocean but only a very small portion of the west coast actually got to see it. The last total eclipse viewable in the contiguous United States was in 1979, almost 40 years ago. Even that one, which was viewable primarily in Canada, only visited a few states in the Pacific Northwest. The 1970 eclipse, which traveled all the way up the east coast, was the last one that was really viewable by many Americans. The solar eclipse this month is a total eclipse that will travel from Oregon to South Carolina. After that, there will be an annular eclipse in 2023 from Oregon to Texas, and a total eclipse in 2024 from Texas to Maine. However, after that, the next major event won't be until 2045. So there you have it. Have you ever seen a solar eclipse? What are your plans for this event? Leave a comment below, and if you learned something, be sure to like and subscribe.